Yo, brawlers, this is your man, Glass Chin, and you're watching Glass Chin's Boxing. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Yo, brawlers, I thought I'd do an update to my own personal top 15 heavyweight rankings that are released for May. I made a few changes, so let's take a look. At number 15, we have As Lambeck Makhmadov, who has 14 wins, 0 losses, 0 draws, and 14 wins by knockout. At number 14, we have Daniel Dubois. 18 and 1, 0 losses, 17 knockouts. At number 13, we have Robert Hellenius, 31 wins, 3 losses, 0 draws, and 20 knockouts. At number 12, we have Frank Sanchez, 20 wins, 0 losses, 0 draws, 13 knockouts. At number 11, we have Martin Bacoli, 18 wins, 1 loss, 0 draws, and 13 knockouts. At number 10, we have Otto Wallin, 24 wins, 1 loss, 0 losses, and 14 knockouts. Number 9, the juggernaut Joe Joyce, 13 wins, 0 losses, 0 draws and 12 knockouts. In at number 8, we have King Kong Luis Ortiz, 32 wins, 2 losses, 0 draws and 28 knockouts. Number 7, the body snatcher Dillian White, 28 wins, 3 losses, 0 draws, 19 KOs. At number 6, XWBO heavyweight champion of the world Joseph Parker 30 wins 2 losses 0 draws 21 knockouts at number 5 ex unified heavyweight champion of the world the destroyer Andy Ruiz Jr 34 wins 2 losses 0 draws 22 knockouts at number 4 ex WBC heavyweight champion of the world Deontay Wilder the bronze bomber 42 wins 2 losses 1 draw 41 big knockouts at number three, two-time ex-heavyweight champion of the world, Anthony Joshua, AJ, 24 wins, two losses, zero draws, 22 KOs. At number two, the current IBF, WBA Super, WBO and IBO heavyweight champion of the world and ex-undisputed cruiserweight champion, Alexander Usyk, 19 wins, zero losses, zero draws, 13 KOs. And the number one heavyweight in the world, in my opinion, we have the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury, the WBC, the Ring Mag, and the Lineal Heavyweight Champion of the World. 32 wins, 0 losses, 1 draw, 23 knockouts. So, brawlers, you might have noticed a few changes from last month. First off, I removed Tony Yoka after his one-sided defeat to Martin Bacoli. Despite what one of the biased judges may have tried to make you believe, the fight was a total domination from Bacoli, so I decided to give him a place on the list. I had Joker at number 10, but I have elevated Otto Wallin up one place from 11 to 10 and slotted Martin Bacoli into the number 11 position. I understand if you would put Bacoli above Wallin. I like Bacoli. He was the first guy to put his hand up to take the Philip Hergovich fight for the IBF final eliminator, when a lot of the other fighters didn't seem to want to know. Unfortunately, Bacoli was still contracted to fight Yoka after the original fight date fell through, which was in January, I believe. That was cancelled due to the pandemic. I bet Yoka wishes he had swerved the fight now and let Bacoli walk away and fight Hergovic instead. Taking Yoka's scalp was a huge win for Bacoli and has put him on the map again. Just for me, though, I put Wallin's win over Dominic Brazil and his good showing against Tyson Fury above Bacoli. Maybe if Bacoli hadn't lost the great fight he had with Michael Hunter, he would have got a high spot on this list. He does hold great wins over Maris Wack and Sergei Kuzman, so no problems if people want to rank him above Wallin. It's just my personal preference. So just to recap, the first change is Tony Yoka out, Wallin moved up a place, and Martin Bacoli in at number 10. Kind of giving myself a few doubts with Wallin's place now, brawlers. Maybe next month I'll drop him back down to number 11. Maybe I'll just feel a little bit sorry for him. His career keeps stalling. It's been kind of a bumpy road for Wallin. He's been struggling to get fights. Then he does get a call up to fight White, who then is finally ordered to fight the WBC champion in Tyson Fury. After the fight at the O2 was already announced, White then gets injured, giving him the benefit of the doubt. I know a lot of people think White ducked the fight. I mean, seeing how White did struggle with Fury turning Southport at times and all the money that would have been on the line, maybe it would have been a smart move if he did duck a Southport in Wallin. But I'll take White's word for it that he was genuinely injured. I'll also take Luis Ortiz's word that he was injured too and that's why he couldn't fight Filip Hergovic for the IBF final eliminator. He has a hard fight with Andy Ruiz Jr. coming up, so I'll give my thoughts on that one tomorrow night. So anyway, Wallin gets called up, wastes a camp, then White pulls out. The show went on and Hearn could have put Wallin in with a even a cherry pick just as a stay busy fight on that card, but he chose not to, leaving Wallin out in the cold. 
Wallin is then back out in the wilderness after he struggled to nail down in-house fights with the PBC for the last few years. He then gets a call-up from Ben Shalom last minute.com. Out of shape, but he's offered a chance to fight on Sky, trying to stay relevant with the British public. So he takes the fight when he's not ready, as you have to take chances in life, but all he does is stink the place out against Camille Sokolowski. If anything, his stock dropped after that fight. It's hard not to feel a little bit sorry for the guy, but he did look a lot better coming in 12 pounds lighter in his 10 round points win over Rydell Booker last month. It's reaching a year and a half since his career best win over Dominic Brazil, so Wally needs to sign a big fight soon. Frank Warren should really be looking at putting him in with Joe Joyce. Why not put Joyce in with a southpaw? Joyce could find himself as Usyk's mandatory in the not-so-distant future. So why not get that work in and get some decent rounds in the bank against a world-class southpaw, now that Parker seems to have gone back on his word? While we're talking about Frank Warren, my only other change on the list this month is removing Filip Hergovic, the new bogeyman of the division. He pulled out of the fight with Zili Zhang, understandably due to the death of his father and not being able to train properly in camp. I struggled with this one, Brawlers, as I didn't really want to take him out of the list, but I thought Daniel Dubois deserved a place after winning the WBA regular world heavyweight title. I mean, this list isn't a list of who beats who, so don't think for a second that I necessarily think that Philip Hergovic would get beaten by Daniel Dubois. A rankings list to me has to be based on merit, resume, what they have achieved. Who I think would win does come into it, of course, but it can't just be based on that alone. There's many factors to consider. If I just did a list on who I think beats who, I'm sure the list would look very different. I'll definitely place Gerard Anderson over at least one or two fighters on the list, but he hasn't beaten anyone yet to back up how good I actually think the kid is. Hashtag future world champion. I think he has a good future ahead of him. Anyway, I did think about removing Makhmadov instead of Hergovic, but he was ranked a place above purely for his explosive win over Maris Wack. I did move Makhmadov down a place and put Dubar in at number 14. I mean, it is hard to rank certain guys when no one seems to want to fight them. Hergovic, Joyce or Wallin. Luis Ortiz had the same problem six or seven years ago, back when no one wanted to fight him, when he was known as the bogeyman of the division. If Hergovic had beat Zili Zhang, then it would definitely have been Makhmadov that come off the list instead. But shoulda, woulda, coulda, we are where we are, as they say. So anyway, brawlers, that's my personal list. Do you agree with me? What do you think I should change? How does my list compare to the governing bodies? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And as always, brawlers, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.